Welcome to another exciting edition of How to Own a Young Earth Creationist, henceforth known as a Yik. Today, lesson number 13, Logical Fallacies of the Yik. Unlike previous ownership lessons, the team of ownership experts at the Jaguar Jones Institute will be presenting several incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle intimations, which are logical fallacies most commonly proposed by Yiks. Follow along in your Yik Owner's Manual, pages 31A to A31. Incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle intimation number one, Loki's Wager. For viewers unfamiliar with the term Loki's Wager, it is a logical fallacy in which the Yik will insist that scientific precepts are incorrect because specific questions cannot be answered in absolute terms. The term Loki's Wager comes from the mythological god of mischief named Loki who made a wager with some individuals of abnormally small stature. The prize that Loki wagered was his head. When the dwarfs came to collect their prize, Loki agreed that his head did rightfully belong to the dwarfs and they were free to take it. However, while the dwarfs were entitled to his head, Loki insisted that the dwarfs take no part of his neck. Since no one could agree as to exactly where the neck ended and the head began, Loki kept his head indefinitely. Viewers who are experienced at repeatedly bludgeoning their craniums against the permanent upright construction which can be empirically and consistently measured to have a length greater than its thickness, whose internal capacity is pervaded by the lack of knowledge either by willful neglect or personal incredulity that is often the dividing partition between comfortable delusions and reality, will recognize this logic, or lack thereof, which is frequently presented by the yik brain. Of course, Loki's wager can easily be defeated and ownership of your yik can be taken with the greatest of expedience. The most common form of Loki's wager that is presented by the yik is the insistence that a strict and absolute answer must be given to such questions as exactly when did the homo sapien become a homo sapien. This incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle inquiry is generally followed up by the inaccurate insight of immense intelligence inherent in the yik the first Homo sapien would not have been able to find a mate. Graduates of Biology 101 will recognize this as an inept inference from ignorance. As Aaron, the Texas Tank Raw, has clearly demonstrated, there are three stages to reproduction during speciation. Reproduction with ease, reproduction with difficulty, and no reproduction. Furthermore, the primary catalyst of speciation is the migration of a subset of a biological population to a geographically distant and environmentally distinct location from the originating population. Insisting on an exact answer in absolute terms in the discussion of biology is simply unreasonable and is equivalent to asking exactly when did a sundial become a digital watch. Incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle intimation number two, the bare assertion with appeal to illicit authority. The yik will continuously make statements which can consistently be shown to be drawn via a force applied with vigor towards the force applier from an originating point that is sufficiently within the borders of the elementary canal. When the rational thinker insists that these statements, which emit a distinct aroma of fecal matter, be supported by reasonable evidence, the yik will most often revert to one of the following. I can't remember the source, but I will look it up and post it later. I read it in a book which no one other than myself has access to. My college professor, who cannot be cross-examined, told me. I remember it from grade school, and if you had not been doing so many drugs back then, you would have remembered it too. It says so in the Bible. It's common knowledge. Everyone knows that. I saw it in a news report, but I can't remember which channel. Look it up yourself. When the rational thinker refuses to release the yik from his her its obligation to provide reasonable evidence which would legitimize the assertions made, the yik will often turn to the appeal to illicit authority. The most common illicit authority seems to be the comedian understudy Kit Hoven, who does not have a legitimate PhD and has made demonstrably false statements and is currently incarcerated for tax fraud. When the rational thinker rejects the comedian understudy as a legitimate source, the next most common unqualified purveyor of pretense positioned purely on the perverted process of procurement of pseudoscientific suppositions is the imperial wizard of the intellectual inefficiency known as irreducible complexity, Michael Behe. 
While Michael Bayhe does possess a valid PhD, the Jaguar Jones Institute incontestably demonstrated in How to Own a Yik Irreducible Complexity 1 and 2 that Bayhe made conclusions before doing any research, sold out his scientific credentials to the sworn enemy of science for his own sense of grandiosity, and inadvertently introduced his male organ of copulation and urinary secretion into his own mousetrap. Even Lee University, Behe's employer, specifically disclaims his pitiful primitive postulations of irreducible complexity as untested and not scientific. To recapitulate facts already stated with regards to incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle intimation number two, the YIC cannot produce any legitimate source of information to support their preposterous professions of paramount purality that cannot be impeached, impaled, incinerated, or inexorably ignored. Incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle intimation number three. If all pangolins are gay, how do they reproduce? Regular viewers and those who have a comprehensive understanding of the fact that the rectum is not an alternative stowage space for the cranium will know that gay-looking pangolins do not, in fact, reproduce. All gay-looking pangolins are clones that are created by the team of objectional, offensive, obnoxious colony experts who were swiftly and summarily expelled from the Jaguar Jones Institute in 1995 for isolating the totally gay gene and then creating a totally gay pangolin. Incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle intimation number four, the straw man. The straw man is a logical fallacy in which an opponent's position is misstated in easily refuted terms and then simply refuted. The most common straw man is the banana trees do not give birth to dogs and asserting so strongly suggests that the capacity of your cranial cavity is overly pervaded by fecal matter most likely originating from one or more species of bovine. The inherent issue with this argument is that no such claim, that of a banana tree giving birth to a dog or a gay-looking pangolin giving birth to a dung beetle, has ever been made. Essentially, the straw man argument is an argument from ignorance and incredulity that can be immediately dismissed as apocryphal tripe. Incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle intimation number five, morality equals correctness. This argument is an attempt by the yik to assert their own morality over that of the free thinker. This argument will, of course, rapidly transform into a device of low, poor, or wretched quality that is comprehensively devoid of success in its totality and conception. This general yik statement of slanderous supposition springing from superior stupidity can easily enable the freethinker to take ownership of the yik with the greatest of expedience. First, the freethinker can point out the lack of morality and the massive repositories of hypocrisy among yiks, which will immediately reduce the yik equation to an aggregate accumulation of reprehensible rubble. Incoherent, incredulous, ignorant, intellectually idle intimation number six, the non sequitur with an asinine ascension of apocryphal absurdity. This foul flask of ferocious foolishness generally manifests itself in one of the following terms. I perceive there to be a gap in the fossil record, therefore all tenets of biology were deliberately fabricated from a malicious hatred of God, God exists, and my brand of Christianity is correct to the exclusion of all other possibilities. By asserting that abiogenesis is impossible, we can conclude that it did not happen and all scientists are going to burn in hell and all of us who accept the gift of Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior get to watch you as you are tortured for all eternity. Pangolins are not totally gay and that fact alone proves that you are trying to cover up your own homosexual tendencies. I dug two holes in my backyard, filled them up with water, and concluded that the Grand Canyon could not have been created by evolution, therefore Barack Obama is the Antichrist. I don't understand parallax, therefore the sun revolves around the Earth. Since all of my assertions are unquestionably true, it is not necessary to accept any counter-arguments that might make me question my absolute correctness. When presented with such superfluous sadomasochistic silliness, the freethinker may deduce that this much pain should only be inflicted on oneself and commence to removing his, her, its armpit hair with a soldering iron. However, this will not be necessary because, unbeknownst to the yik, he, she, it has just surrendered ownership of their gluteus maximi to the freethinker. Simply remain silent, and the yik will create their own excavation whose primary purpose is to contain a homo sapien whose life functions have ceased. By simply being aware of all of the above logical fallacies proposed by yiks, you can be sure to take ownership of your yik with the greatest expedience. This is Jaguar Jones saying good day and happy owning.